All right, friends, this is the cleanest this sawmill has been in two years. It's been two years since I bought the LT70. And when I done that, I was without a sawmill for several months, if you guys remember. And this building was, you know, cleaned out, no sawdust or nothing. It looks pretty good today. I did edge those cedar boards and throw some dust on the floor, but other than that, it looks pretty good. So if you guys recall, in the last video I posted, I had Woodmiser up here last week. Dennis Ottinger, one of their mechanics, was up here. We did a lot of maintenance videos, and that's why the building looked pretty nice in that last video. Everything was cleaned up. I want everything to look good on camera for the Woodmiser videos. Now, if you want to see those videos, go subscribe to Woodmiser's YouTube channel. I shot the footage, but they're going to be doing all the editing up in Indianapolis. So if you want to see those maintenance videos and blade guide alignment videos, go check out their page. I'm not sure when they'll be posting those, but I'll let you guys know when they do start uploading them. On the sawmill, we've got Eastern Red Cedar. A lot of you guys call it juniper. We all know what it is. It's red. It smells like cedar and it has that aroma. And uh, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what you call it. People get fighting mad over that when I call it red cedar. I get emails sometimes with exclamation points. That red cedar is juniper. Well, it is what it is. It's cedar to us, so uh, that's what I'm gonna call it. We're gonna be sawing these into one by sixes. My dad called me, he needs about 16 of these to finish up a fence he's been working on. These are pretty small though. The diameter on the operator's side is barely 12 inches, about 10 inches down there. So there's a little bit of taper in this, but this is the ideal size cedar or juniper that you can sawmill, guys. You get these cedars that get 20 inches and bigger, and they have very, very large voids in the middle of them. This one actually has a void right there on the top, but it shouldn't be too bad, it shouldn't be too bad. On the sawmill, we have a brand new Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want those blades, call Joe. Cell phone number's in the video description. And also, a few more things. Some of you guys have been asking me about this hat. I bought it on Amazon, there's a link down below. I've had it for about a year and I would buy it again because I will wear it out eventually and I'll probably buy me another one. So it's a really good hat. I think it's called like a Outback hat or something like that. It's held up pretty good. I've wore it all summer. Also, the Paul Bunyan show is coming up October the 6th, the 7th, and the 8th. I will be there Friday and Saturday, October the 6th and the 7th. I'll be at the Woodmiser tent pretty much all day long. If you come by to see me and I'm not there, I'm either in my truck taking a nap or I'm in the food line. So just hang out or go look at something else and I'll be back shortly, but I'll be there Friday and Saturday. I will not be there Sunday. So uh, if you live close to Cambridge, Ohio, come by and see me. Been there two years in a row. It's always a really good show and Woodmiser's gonna have some new products there this year. And I don't even know what they are guys, so come check it out. It might be pretty interesting. So this log will go really fast. We've got one more to go after this one, and there should be enough boards out of this to fill Dad's order. I need to call him, see if he's gonna come and get them today. And also, speaking on the cleanliness of this area, I really like it being clean. I've not, I've not cleaned in here, guys, or swept it up all summer long. It took me almost two days to clean this place up. I had about five inches of bark and sawdust under the mill. It was a mess. So having said all that, I went ahead and ordered all the stuff I'm going to need. It should be all the stuff I need. I'm sure I'll need something else. It never fails. But we're going to hook up a dust collector to the sawmill. I got a brand new Harbor Freight two horsepower collector I bought on sale about a year ago. And it should do a decent job at pulling the dust out of the 70. I don't think it would get all of it. We may have to buy a bigger one later on and that's okay. But it's what I got right now, so we're going to use it. I got the hose ordered. I had another friend of mine down south that sent me some tools to make it a little bit easier. I'll share, I'll share that with you guys when we start installing it. But hopefully by this weekend, we're going to have dust collection on the 70. I'm really excited about that. I am just tired of sweeping up sawdust. It's not a big deal, but it's getting old and I'm getting tired of doing it. So I'm going to shoot out the side of the building over here and just make a pile of it. When it gets up to a certain level, I'll take it to the compost pile, the chicken house, or I'll burn it, one of the three. And people ask me why I don't sell that stuff. The horse guys around here and the cow farmers don't like it because it's so fine like baby powder, it does not do good for livestock. It does okay with chickens, but 
livestock, it makes a mess. So that's why it doesn't go to those guys. When you hear about farms wanting sawmill chips, it's usually from a circle sawmill because they're removing sometime a quarter of an inch on the turf and they got really big chips in their sawdust. So farmers like that a lot better. It works out better in the barn stalls with the horses and the cows and all the livestock. So having said all that, dust collection here in just a few days and I'd be lying if I didn't say I was excited about it just a little. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm tired of sweeping this floor. So let's get going guys and open this one up. This cedar log, AKA juniper, should be pretty good. I'm looking forward to it. You guys hang in there. friends we finished up that log pretty fast it went pretty good we got some nice one by sixes out of that they're nice and clear with limited knots not a whole lot of defects got a little void right there but not too bad these will be used for a fence and i think dad's going to paint them so they'll look just fine here when he hangs them up but we do have one problem so the problem is the set in that blade if I bring the camera down here and tilt it, you can see these little stripes that are going across the face of the board. You can feel them right there. And something's happened to that blade. Either two things, there was a nail in this log and I didn't hear it or see it, or maybe there was a rock or something in the bark and it messed up the blade and messed up the set on it. Now it's still cutting pretty good, but I do not like these little stripes right here going across the face of the boards. So. Let's fix it. Now this right here, friends, is a brand new blade. It's never been resharpened. If this was gonna be the second or third sharpening on this blade, I would probably run it through the setter. But since it's the first sharpening, and the only problem is a tooth got out of set just a little, I can usually fix that on my sharpener right here. Let me show it to you. All right, guys, this is the Woodmiser BMS 250. Says it right there on the top. I, I can never remember those numbers. It's a really nice sharpener. I bought this thing probably 2018. I use it all the time. Works really good. If you want one of these sharpeners and you have a sawmill, you should have a sharpener. It will save you money in the long run. Call Joe Main down at ICT Blades, the same guy I get my blades from, and he will hook you up. He sells this sharpener and also he sells setters. So give him a shout if you want to buy one. So this blade, guys, is in really good shape. It's still sharp. It just got knocked off set just a little. And usually, like I was saying, I can fix that 
with a very light grinding on this machine. Let's see how it goes. We'll run this all the way around. We'll put it back on the mill and see if it works. If it don't work, I'll have to set it over there on my manual setter later on and we'll put a new fresh blade on there just to finish up the day. Now this sharpener is easy to operate once you put your blade in it. You run it around a few times and you stop it with the stone in the gullet and I always grab a flashlight and I look in there to make sure the grinding wheel, which is this part right here, there's the grinding wheel, is falling right there in the gullet so you can get a proper grind. And usually it don't take but a few seconds to set this up. And if you don't mess with it, you usually just leave it alone. I've not messed with these settings in a long time, but I use the same blades every time. If you use a lot of different profiles, you gotta change this wheel out and you will have to change the power feed just a little bit, not a whole lot, just a little. It's easy to adjust. You just move this screw right here in and out, super simple. So once I verify that, I turn on the oil bath, I turn on the grinder, I shut this lid because it does kind of squirt out right here. All right, so if this goes right, I won't get oil all over the camera. There it goes. So I'll have to stop it right there and turn on the wheel and let it get up to speed. And then we start grinding. 